Hello friends, I am Rashmi. Welcome to SRS Info. Today we will do the second part of the chapter Nutrition and Health. And today's topic is Protein. So what is Protein? Proteins are the essential constituents of all nutrients. These are the essential constituents of all nutrients. And proteins are the complex nitrogenous compounds or amino acid. These are the complex nitrogenous compound. What are the functions of protein? Proteins are the bodybuilders. So bodybuilding is the main function of protein. Then maintenance of osmotic pressure, synthesis of antibodies, plasma proteins and hemoglobin are also the function of proteins. So these are the main functions of protein. Then what are the constituents of protein? Even though these are the nitrogenous compound, it contains other constituents also. This is the approximate percentage, about 54% of carbon, 16% of nitrogen, 22% of oxygen, 1% of hydrogen, 1% of phosphorus, 1% of sulfur, then in minute quantities of phosphorus, iron and other trace elements. These are the main constituents of protein. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, iron and other trace elements. Then essential amino acids. I have told you that proteins are made of amino acids. Proteins are made of smaller units called amino acids. Okay. And human body needs 24 amino acids which are coming under essential and non-essential category. Okay. Now what are the essential amino acids? Essential amino acids are isoleucine, leucine, methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, arginine and histidine. You have to remember these names also. These are the essential amino acids required in our body. Then let us have a look into the sources of proteins. What are the main sources of protein? We can get protein from animal sources and vegetable sources, plant sources. But I mean, uh, compared to plant proteins or vegetable proteins, animal proteins are perfect because it contains all essential amino acids. The examples of animal protein are milk, meat, egg, fish, etc. And egg is very important source of protein because it contains high biological value. It has high biological value and digestibility. This is the most important thing for most important factor of egg. Egg is a rich source of protein, essential amino acid. It contains essential amino acid with high biological value and digestibility. Okay. And compared to animal protein, vegetable proteins are poor amino acids. Examples are pulses, cereals, beans, nuts, etc. These are the rich sources of vegetable protein. Okay. Then I have told you that egg has a high biological value of protein. So what does it mean? What is the meaning of biological value? Biological value of protein is the percentage of nitrogen retained from out of the nitrogen absorbed from the gut. For example, simply we can say that the nitrogen used for tissue formation out of the nitrogen absorbed from the food. Okay, suppose the 100% of nitrogen absorbed from the food and 30% of nitrogen is used for the tissue formation. Okay, so this is the biological value. This is calculated in percentage. So the nitrogen used is 30. The total nitrogen absorbed is suppose 80. Then it is multiplied by 100. So this is the biological value of protein. Clear? The formula is nitrogen used for tissue formation. Nitrogen used for tissue formation divided by nitrogen absorbed from food multiplied by 100. Okay. By this formula, we can calculate the biological value. This is the percentage of nitrogen retained from out of the nitrogen absorbed from the gut or our stomach or belly. How much nitrogen is absorbed out of which how much nitrogen is used for tissue formation. Clear? And higher the biological value, greater the quality of protein. Based on the biological value, we can analyze the quality of protein. And by Analyzing this biological value, we can say that animal proteins are rated better than plant protein. Okay, animal proteins are biologically complete because it contains essential amino acid. Now, let us, let us understand some important aspects about protein metabolism. 
again this is an important topic okay proteins are not stored in the body one of the most important point all these points are very very important you have to learn as it is proteins are not stored in the body but they are replaced every day so protein intake is very essential protein daily protein intake is very essential for our bodybuilding clear proteins are not stored so that we have to take protein daily they are replaced every day and body proteins are constantly broken down into individual amino acid proteins are the complex amino acid chain but in the body it is broken down into individual amino acid these are again reused for protein synthesis this broken down amino acid is again reused for protein synthesis for our health for our body maintenance okay and the amount and pattern of protein in the body is maintained constant for maintaining this constant protein in the body we have to focus on the proper adequate intake of protein for the effective utilization of this dietary proteins the calorie intake should be adequate then only the protein metabolism can take place properly in our body and the required nutrients can be absorbed okay so these are some important aspects of protein metabolism then what are the average daily requirement for an adult average daily requirement of protein for an adult is 1 gram per kilogram body weight 1 gram per 1 kilogram so you can calculate how much protein is required for you per day okay the average daily requirement of protein is 1 gram protein per 1 kilogram body weight clear and this 1 gram protein provides 4 calorie of energy okay so how much energy 1 gram protein can provide 4 calorie energy what will happen if you cannot have the proper intake of protein it will lead to protein deficiency of course and this protein defi deficiency can mainly categorized into two one is marasmus and the second is quasi worker both are caused by the deficiency of protein but marasmus is mainly affected to children less than one year of age and quasi worker is more than one year of age okay and the symptoms are also different Marasmus is characterized by reduced body weight and shrunken wasted appearance. You can say, see people with shrunken, shrunken waist, okay, absolutely skeletal appearance. This is due to marasmus, lack of protein. Due to lack of protein, the bodybuilding is not taking place, okay, so that the shrunken wasted appearance can be seen and the body weight is reduced. But in the case of Kashi worker, what will happen? It is mainly affected to children and adult, that is more than one year of age okay and this is characterized by edema the reabsorption and the reutilization of the broken down protein is not taking place for the broken down amino acids is not utilized for the protein synthesis so that edema can be seen and the body weight can be increased and fatty liver can occur so the symptoms or characteristics of cashew worker are edema increased body weight and fatty liver okay so these are the detailed explanation about protein its resources its important aspects of metabolism its deficiency etc i hope you enjoyed this video thank you